and we are live all right so welcome everybody and uh for those of you who don't know me my name is mike <laughs> uh i've been uh having fun with this meetup group for a little over oh, 10 years now so uh, this has been kind of fun uh so today we will be doing some review of, of uh, photoshop in particular and yeah. looking at some of the ai capabilities that uh, have been introduced and we'll, we'll review some of the AI that's, that was there for a while now. They select subjects, select backgrounds, some of that stuff's pretty fan, <laughs> fancy. Uh, you know, sky replacement, there's all kinds of real neat stuff that's out there, but the, the stuff that is now in beta is, uh, is, is quite fascinating. So um, what, uh, what I'm gonna be doing is kind of showing a, a bunch of different images. And let me just share my screen here. And go to Lego. Oh, there's Ella. All right. <laughs> so you should be seeing my Lightroom screen. Now, if we want to save bandwidth, you guys are not going to be appearing, so you can just shut off your, your video, just keep your audio stream going. And um, what I've been doing is, is, is a couple of things with this, uh, this, this AI platform, and, and it's been kind of neat to see some of the, the, the power that, that, that you can do. So uh, some of the things that, that I, I was doing, for instance, this is the, the, the image. We went off and did a meetup and uh, did some horses in a field and I was fooling around and I said, oh, let me try something here. And so I, I just experimented and, and added some water and uh, someone says, oh, you should do a meetup uh, on, on how you did that. <laughs> and I went, sure, <laughs> makes sense. So those are the kinds of stuff that I've been doing. So there's all kinds of interesting uh, use cases. And, and the, the typical use case is, you know, there's three people on the beach and, and, you know, two of them are a couple and some person's doing a photo bomb in the background and you want to eliminate the person in the background. And that's, you know, that's the typical use case. But I've been doing all kinds of interesting things like getting rid of graffiti. Uh, so, you know, that type of thing. I've been, you know, uh, I, I wanted to get this person in a puddle, but you know, the puddle wasn't quite big enough. So, so, you know, it, this is the, the, the original puddle and I, I just enlarged the puddle. So, you know, th there's all kinds of stuff that you could be doing. Uh, cleaning up, you know, is, is, is something that we, we often do. Here's a, a typical scene and, you know, I could have waited until the bus came by and, you know, waited until, you know, there, there was passers by and, and so on and so forth. But, you know, a little bit of clean up and, and boom. So I've been finding this is very, very useful tool and, and some people can take AI to the extreme where the image is no longer the image. It's, it's, it's virtually all AI. And, and yeah, you can you can do some pretty fantasy, you know, some, some pretty fancy stuff. And, and so, you know, I, I went from, you know, that simple picture in the studio to, to that picture. And, and yeah, you can do that. But while I'll cover that, I think what I want to do is have you guys understand just the power that this provides just for your typical day-to-day -day photo edits without having to, to get into you know fantasy world uh, all of our tasks our day-to-day -day tasks have become a whole lot easier so let's start with the fact that the, the, the latest and greatest tools are available only in beta so what you need to do is go to your creative cloud and uh, where's my creative cloud um, oops come on go to your creative cloud and once you get to your creative cloud you have to go down to beta apps and once you're in beta apps, you can download this thing called Photoshop Beta. Now, if you wait, you know, another whatever month or two, then you know this will become the default, and, and you'll get uh, you'll get all of these these tools that you have automatically. But for right now, you have to both pull down Photoshop Beta if you want to play with any of these tools. So that's that's how you go about getting it. And once it's downloaded, then you have a choice when you you bring up Photoshop, uh, and I, I can bring up, you know, normal Adobe Creative Cloud, I can bring up uh, Photoshop Beta, and I can bring up Photoshop 2023, which is the non-beta one. So they can all coexist at the same time. So I happen to have the, the beta one turned on at the moment. So let's talk about some of the things that we can do with, with Photoshop. And I'll just bring up, where is my Photoshop? There it is. So here's your, your, your typical, um, your typical photo and I was just just doing a, a glamour shot and this was over in front of the National Art Gallery and what I did is 
I pose them all <clears throat> with the sun coming down so that the sunlight is hitting her face and you know the shadows behind her and you know it's, it's a nice picture but try as I might there's so many cars and then people coming by and so on and so forth so you take the picture and you figure okay I'm gonna have to do a little bit of cleanup so here's our typical scenario here right I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna you know say okay well this is where, where what I want to clean up and you can take your, your, your clone brush and you can kind of just, you know, pick a spot and start. <coughs> I, want to be, I want to be here. I'll create a new, pick a spot. And I want to get all layers. So I'm not going to get into a lot of detail here, but, you know, this is what you, you typically did. And you tried to, you know, clean up and erase and, and you know, you just, you did this stuff here to try to, to, to fix your, your picture and, and, and you know, it, it, it took time and you could, you know, you could do a reasonable job and, and so on. And that was kind of the, the way you, you, you tackle things and you had to spend a little bit more time than that because I had to, you know, there we go, something like that. So, you know, you can get it done. So I will just delete that. Uh, but now you've got some, some other tools that, you know, let you do things in a little bit faster way. So there's this little new thing here called remove. And there's a little tutorial that goes with it and you can kind of run the, the remove tool. But the, the goal is to be able to just paint the area that you want to remove. So again, right, right bracket and right and left square brackets just make the, the brush bigger or smaller. And you just you paint over the thing that you want to get rid of and you say this I don't really like and I don't really like the shadow that's behind it either. And I just want you to get rid of that. And oh, it put a, a garbage pail or something in there. I don't want that either. So there you go. And there, it's gone. And I'm coming, oh, I don't really like that traffic light. So I'll just get rid of that. And I'm, I'm being, you know, too many people here. And, and it's just, it's, it's just putting stuff there that, that makes sense. And I don't have to spend a lot of time thinking about it. I just want to get rid of that car. And oops, the little artifact I got produced there. And then it's going to get rid of this. And so you, you're, you're, you're cleaning up stuff a lot, lot faster. So how much time am I going to spend when I'm taking a photo? And I'm trying to decide whether or not I'm going to sort of spend 10 minutes waiting for the cars to go by, or am I just going to take the time and, and go ahead and do it in, in, in Photoshop? And, and so I, I'm now making trade-offs that are a little bit different. Uh, before I would, you know, let's say there was a, a wall or something with a wall plate, and, and I would have to make a decision, and I'd say, okay, I either move the model so her body's in front of the, the, the light switch and, and I don't see it, or I... Um, move her away from the light switch and, uh, far enough so that it's not interfering with her, her her head or her hair. So I wouldn't want the light switch sort of half hidden by her hair and I have to somehow cut around their hair. So I'm, I'm making those real-time decisions as I go along to make sure that I don't uh, don't have extra hard work, you know, removing the light plug because it's, it's, it's uh, you know, mixed up in your hair. But now I, you, you start to, to decide, you know, like, do I really want that building in behind her there? And I can kind of just do something like that. And, and you know, just to kind of clean up a, a possible distraction. And, you know, sensor dust. Whoops, something else over here. So with the, the remove tool, it's just making an arbitrary decision. And, you know, it's not really deciding. It's looking at the picture and trying to make some sort of an intelligent assumption about what's, what's, uh, what should have gone there. Sometimes it makes a mistake, uh, like if I try to erase this building and, and try to get the, the sky back in underneath her, it may or may not do that, and it may just bring the dress up, and you know, it didn't quite do a nice job. So I can just undo it and you know, just try again and, and just you know, use random luck to, to, uh, to give me something that I like, and, or I can just kind of eventually say, you know, just, just pretend the dress is connected to her arm and you know, live, with, live with that. I can build, I can copy the sky into underneath her arm and, and do a bunch of other stuff. Uh, sky replacement is something that was there before. I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but I mean, usually the, the, the ability to do that is, is something that we've, we've seen before. And um, again, it, is that really AI? I mean, it's got to figure out where the sky is and so on and so forth. And with the new tools where you can go ahead and select objects, uh, 
Photoshop will start finding objects. It says, oh, I found a person there, and, and I found some, some cement over here. And, and so it, it can you know, start to detect, oh, there's a sky here. So it automatically starts to find things. And if you had three or four people, it would start to find each one. So it's doing a lot of the work for you. And back in the day, <laughs> We spent a tremendous amount of time selecting subjects to, to you know, try to separate the subject from the background and trying to select the sky and trying to select this, try to select that. All of this selection work and all the time and effort we used to spend on selection is, is, is just been reduced to, to, to sort of child's play type of thing. So what I'm finding is, you know, you can, you can get upset about AI and, you know, saying it's make, making life too easy or whatever. But to me, artistic, um, interpretation is, is, is what's in our head. How we translate that depends on, on the tools we have available. If we have tools that makes it easier, then, then great. If we have tools that makes it, you know, a, a four hour effort, well, then sometimes, you know, creativity takes a back seat to the amount of time you have available. So <clears throat> taking a look at the, at the sort of before and after with this type of thing, uh, oops, let's go back here. So this is kind of a let's go full screen, and and sort of this is kind of like some people in the background, a little car sort of next to her dress, another car sort of you know that we erased at the very beginning, a uh, bland sky, wow. and, and you know this is like very very quick types of uh, of edits to uh, to be done. So that is really the remove tool, and we'll we'll, we'll talk about how powerful that is as we go along because I'll show you some other examples. Let's go to this one here. And there's a little bit of distraction here and over there. There's a little bit of weeds growing on the side. There's, you know, some, some uh, whatever you call that, uh, decay or something on the side of the building. So, I mean, they're okay. I mean, you know, they, they, they were there, but, you know, I, I'm trying to come up with a, a picture that's worthy of a magazine. And, and, and this is for a haute couture designer, uh, Hiba Boutique. And so I'm, I'm trying to come up with, with nicer images. And so I, I I went from you know the distractions in the background over here to you know just removing some of those and cleaning up that those weeds that are here down at the bottom and you can see the weeds over here so let's just go over to Photoshop and let's go to the next one here and so here's the kind of the before and after and just to show you just how simple this is now you can do this non-destructively that one first what I used to do is copy the image and then alter the the, the, the other copy but I've learned that I can actually do it non-destructively, so Control uh, shift n and I'll just say this is my fixed layer or something like that. And now I can turn around and I can use my delete, um, my remove tool. And I want to make sure now that I do a um, sample all layers. That has to be turned on because I, I'm working on an empty layer, so I have to sample all of it. So I'm just going to turn around and make the brush a little bit bigger and say, okay, this thing is kind of a bit of an eyesore and I don't want that. So I'll just get rid of that. And it thinks about it. And now it has to send the stuff, whoops, it's still not, it, it sends the stuff up to the cloud, which is interesting. So just think of how many people are doing this at the same time as me. <laughs> and, you know, the fact that they they are all doing this and stuff is going up coming down now there's just a bit of a weed here which i don't care for and, and what i find interesting is it it'll it recognizes lines and and will often replace the line with another line so you know there's a little bit of a dip in the cement there so i'll, I'll clean that up and it just like it just became a straight line how did it know what i wanted i don't know <laughs> so you know let's see what we can do with some of this stuff And it's thinking, and you know, so so it's 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 cleaner, you know. And do I want to start painting over it? Well, I can do that type of thing as well. So what I'm finding really interesting is is the ability to just go ahead and, and just just clean up stuff. And, and I mean, how much time do I want to spend on cleaning up grass and stuff like that? But think about it. Oh, they removed the line, which I didn't want to do. So I'm just going to go back here and. So what I typically like, there we go, that's better. So that was probably a little too thick. So I try to do things that, that, that uh, no, they removed it. Actually, I could probably live with that, but you know. 
So sometimes I just have to undo it and, and clean it up a little bit just to see you know what it's going to do. So control Z, uh, control zero, sorry. And so that's a much cleaner image, and this is my my before and after. So I mean a lot nicer. Now the other thing I found is I can do some really neat things. Just you know, clean up the dress. There's a little bit of a a little bit of sort of a wrinkle or something over here. So I just kind of just get rid of some of those those wrinkles, and it leaves the texture. We'll get into other examples later, but it leaves the texture of the of the material. And so all of a sudden I, I'm, 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 I'm reducing, there's another little wrinkle over here. And so to remove wrinkles before, I used to use techniques like, uh, you know, smoothing and so on and so forth. So I, I would get in here and I would use a, a smoothing brush or whatever the heck it is. And do, 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 pencil, brush, smoothing. There we go. Uh, yeah, I would, art history, brush history, brush, no, I'm not finding it. One of the things I found was with beta, it, it's changed all my tools and, and I don't have my own defaults anymore. And because it's just beta, I'm not going to bother reconfiguring it. But, but it's, uh, I'm finding it very powerful. And, and so the remove tool is the one I'm using a lot. Everyone talks about this new generative fill and then we'll talk a little bit about that. But I mean, the, the ability to, uh, to just clean things up is, is for me has been a, a godsend. So this, this particular gown was one of the ones where it had these sequins that are on the dress were also on this veil. And it's on the other side, it's on the flat back side of the veil. So if you were to look at it from the back, you'd see these nice little sequins. But from the inside, it, it just looked kind of like, what the heck is that thing over there? So, I mean, with the designer's permission, I, I said, can I get rid of that? But I was looking at it and going, how am I going to do this? I mean, there's, there's, there's windows behind here. There's all kinds of stuff that's, that's, that's there. Um, control shift and boom. And there we go. There we go. And so, so there, there's all these windows and stuff. And it says, well, how's this going to work? So, I, I mean, I tried it and I just experimented a little bit. And it says, you know, what's it going to do? And, oh, the window's still there. Okay, let's try this over here and see what happens there. And it's kind of like, oh, that's not bad. And so <laughs> I, I said, how does it know to do this? I mean, there's a fence back there. And it just, it leaves the fence. So you see that I can get to this image with just a little, uh, a couple of clicks, and I'm going, I, I, I don't know, to me this is magic. So, the, you know, the, the other stuff that's there is, is, you know, like, you know, the flagpole is, you know, child's play for sure. You know, there's, there's extra, you know, stuff over here that maybe is a little bit of a distraction, and you can just play with it. And, and I'm not being particularly, you know, a little bit sloppy with, with, with the brush. You know, maybe that window's too, a bit of a distraction. And again, I got all this dirt along here type of thing, so I started cleaning up some of that dirt. And kind of reduce the, 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 the and it left the line. And it's just it's just kind of cleaning it up a little bit for me, without removing the whole thing. And so if you just look at before and after, that's a much net much neater job. And, and so I'm kind of gone. I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> and so this is the kind of stuff that uh, that I, I found very, very interesting. Now, I mean, you could do all kinds of other cool stuff, right? And, and we'll get into some of that. So for instance, this is the eraser tool. The um, the generative fill is, is a, another uh, tool. And what you do is you use your tool and you say, okay, I want, uh, whoops. Uh, Take all of this, boop, 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 there, and then I missed a spot, so I'll hit the shift key and just pick up a little bit more. And did I pick up all of it? No, I didn't pick up that portion of the dress. Right there is good. So I just picked up a little bit all the way around. I don't think I missed any of the dress. And then I'll turn around and I'll say something like, um, wedding gown. And it goes off to the cloud and it looks at the picture and it looks at you know, the position of our hand and, and, and everything else. And we'll start substituting 
which he's wearing with something else. So, and it usually gives you always three, three samples. And, you know, some of them are better than others, but the, the, again, we're still in beta mo mode, and this thing is, is doing all kinds of magic. Now, because I highlighted all of the background, right, if you look at my, my original selection, okay, that, I, that, that did that whole selection, look at the building behind it. it. It substituted that building. So I would have to be much more exact if I wanted to be, you know, try to retain the building and start working with, with other things. But the, what, we're, what we're doing here is, is just, you know, it's just replacing things with things that kind of make sense. And you can do a, a fair amount. And if you don't like those wedding gowns, you just say generate again and it'll give you another three options. So this is not the kind of stuff that I would typically use it for because you know, I, mean, I want to shoot, be shoot a real wedding gown. I, <laughs> I don't want a, a, an invented wedding gown. But, you know, sometimes you, you, you're, you're looking for ideas or concepts or, or whatever. So um, I, I did something on my YouTube channel and I'll just show you guys on my YouTube channel, wherever that is. Uh, if you a, selected the model's face, would it substitute hey everyone, her with somebody else? This is a quick little video we'll, to I'll introduce you. Uh, so it does a very poor job with faces, and I'll talk about that. Some of these are one of the limitations. But in this particular case, this guy was holding a water bottle at a wedding, and the bride says, I really like the picture of, of my, my, my husband, but you know, a water bottle, really? And so I just highlighted the hands and the water bottle, and I said, generate something. And it went off and it generated a bunch of stuff. And it tried generating, um, you know, a martini glass. It tried generating, you know, other things. It, it generated uh, a candle, a wedding present, a, uh, you know, a wing, a, 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 an engagement ring. So, I mean, it was interesting that it just generated a bunch of stuff. <laughs> and I use that as my, my, my basis for, for going in and doing the, the, the edit myself. So DAL-E was, was an early AI product and it's still out there and it's, it's, not, it's not Adobe, it's, it's some other tool. And it, it, its limitations was you know, uh, low resolution and so on and so forth. So the whole picture had to be you know, 1024 at the, at the largest. Um, Photoshop is, is no, not that limited. This is my, my full size um, raw image. However, if you were to pixel peep and look at this gown, the area that is generated by Adobe Firefly, which is their generative fill uh, tool, is limited to 1024. So even though the picture might be high resolution, this area that got generated, the biggest it will be is 1024. So you'd have to generate it in pieces. As for a face, if you turn around and you, you, you try to say something like, um, I don't know. Uh, give me, uh, give me an actress, or or somebody. Spontaneous burst of silence. <laughs> we have to unmute, so it's a lot of work. Come on now. <laughs> you have to what? Unmute. Oh, Find unmute. the button. Unmute. Uh, if you just hit the space bar on a on a desktop, you, you're 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 instantly unmuted. Um, I don't know. What's, uh, I, I don't know any actresses. That's why I, I, I'm not. I don't know. Julia Roberts. Julia yeah. Roberts. <laughs> J-U-L-I-A. N-I-A. Julia Roberts. I, I don't think the space bar uh, unmutes here. It does on Zoom, but it doesn't yeah. seem to here. Okay. So uh, so it gave me a warning here. So says, hey, you're trying to do something here that, oops, I, I, I tapped it by mistake. It says you, 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 you're, you're falling outside our parameters of acceptability. So they don't want you generating porn or graphic you know, stuff and whatnot. Now, sometimes, mm -hmm. I don't know why, but when you, you, you try to generate something, it, it, it thinks that what it, you're asking for is not what it, it uh, is allowed or generate something for some reason and, and that's, you know, uh, a no-no. So maybe, maybe because you put a specific celebrity, but if you asked to generate an Asian face or something, I'd, I'd be interested yeah. in a feature like that. A-I-S-I. So basically there is reasonable expectation. Yeah, so what, what you'll find is, is the faces, in my, in my opinion, are very distorted. They're not usable. Now, there are other products out there that, in fact, specialize in that. 
So that's, I mean, that's not bad. There's your Asian face, and, and you've got, you know, a couple of options there. So I'm not crazy about that one, but <laughs> funny, uh, funny expression. So, I mean, you know, like, but I, I found that very often when I'm trying to generate faces or, or, or if I include the face as part of uh, something, then uh, it's, it's not, a, not, a, not a very acceptable uh, result. So a more, a more typical use for me would be, I'll just get rid of that, is, is I'll do something like, uh, and, and I'll just say something like hat. But the the face uh, the faces were pretty good, Mike. They it's were okay, her, but, but I mean, her it's her arm, her left arm is, is yeah. messed yeah, you're up. you're right. right. The left arm is really distorted on, in that particular one. So I, I'll just go back to actually I'll, I'll get rid of the uh, I'll go back to our original. So there's hat one, hat two, and hat three. Now I want you to notice how I I drew the hat. It was this little space. And then I said, generate hat. And so it generated a hat, but it has to f put the hat in the space that I generated. If I get rid of that and I generate a hat, like that, and I say hat, now it's got a lot more space to work with. And it's not gonna generate a beret or a little cap or, or whatever it's going to use the space that I've given it and it's going to generate some sort of a, a different hat. Okay, a very fashionable hat, you know. And so, so one of the things that I found is with generative fill is if you suggest by what you select more or less what you're going to get, then you'll be much more successful. So let me give you a, another example. Let me see if I have Let's see. And okay, let me go back here. Um, I'll use this one. Edit in Photoshop, and because I already have the the, the beta open, that's where we'll go. And there we go. So I'm going to turn around and so th this particular one, what I, what was happening and, and why I went to to AI is she was on a backdrop and the backdrop ended right there, just at her feet. I mean, it, it just rolled onto the floor maybe by two feet and, and then I, then I had the regular the regular floor and and the the image originally in fact was that's what came out of my camera. Okay, so. So that, that's kind of what, what I had, and I'm kind of going, oh, Donna, I need to do something. So I tried the, you know, expanding it. I'll just go Control Z and, and do that. So I tried just doing the, this thing over here, and it just says, you know, and, and I just said, so now if you say, you know, uh, wooden floor, you know, you're going to get, you know, some varieties of, of, of wooden floor. And so you, you, I found myself experimenting a little bit because I, I wanted to extend this. And, and extending that little backdrop is a, a bit of a pain, you know, trying to copy this texture and so on and so forth. So I experimented with a couple of different options. And, and I really wasn't very happy with, you know, like its definition yeah. of wooden floor. I mean, it, it did what I asked and not what I wanted. <laughs> But the, they've had a feature for a few years now, content aware fill, which is what I would have tried for something like that. So let's do that, right? So so this is the the, 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 the you know so I do that and edit fill. And, and I have a couple of examples where where um it, it yeah, it's filled down you go down about a third of the way and then there's an option content aware after you click the fill menu. Yeah, it's not just not highlighted. I, I think it's because I'm not. Oh, because the, the background is locked. There you might go. want to use a smaller so move your selection down so it's just uh, on the floor. Well, no, I actually don't want that floor. I actually want the, the this this grass texture to, 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 to make it look like it's uh, OK. Yeah. So content aware and I'll say OK. 
and um, you know, I mean, it, it's it's kind of cool. You know, it's, it's it's sort of there. And you know, can I use that? I mean, now you can start playing with, with a combination of things. So let's just accept this. For it, a made, it made part of the dress as part of the. Of the yeah, it, it did. Yeah, some of that. so now you could use that removal tool, perhaps. Yeah. So now here's here's the choice. Now I either try the removal tool and, and I try to clean this up a little bit, and I can do something like this. And and you're going to find that you're going to be bouncing back and forth between the remove tool and the generate tool. So that's you know kind of not bad. And so, so you're, you're now I'm using the remove tool a little at a time. Now it's giving me a lot of patterns. I think you can see the pattern is all repeated over and over again. It's it's running out of things to do. Okay, so so the, it's uh, I see a lot of, of repetition. So now this is where I would start saying, okay, I'm going to take a section of this. And now I'm going to copy this stuff over here, and maybe you know, just I'll take another little big, little piece. And I want to break up some of the patterns. So I'm not just going to say generate a fill, but I'm not actually going to give it any text. So when you say nothing, it substitutes with what it thinks would be acceptable, given everything else it sees. And so I have no idea what it's going to give me here. And I mean, there's a little bit of waiting, but I'm still amazed at how fast this stuff is, given that you know it's got to go all the way up to the cloud, process it with millions of other requests that are probably happening at the same time. And then I'm back again. And so, so it just generated some stuff, and it's given me some variety, too. There's another one, and there's another one. So. So there's there's three different options there, and so and what I did in my particular case, and then here's another example. See this this the background kind of folded in or something. There's a little bit of space there, so I could just again go over here and just clean that up a little bit. That was probably way too much, you know, area than than I needed. And there we go. Let me just clean that up. So what I ended up doing, though, that my 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 idea back back then is that I was not sure what I was going to do, and I just said generate a fill, and then I just said reflection or or water or something like that, or pond. I think I said I don't remember. And you can just try different uh, different examples of stuff. But this was just my way of extending the background. And that's not particularly nice. And I don't particularly like that one either. And I don't oh, did I uh hmm. I think it's 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 responding to my previous uh, selections, my, my funky selections. Because certainly That's what I had originally, and that's what it generated. But let me just get rid of. So I think I'm going to get rid of that one and that one. And what is this? No, oh, get rid of that too. And so that was my original layer. Well, that's just some cleanup over here. Some some flowers. Okay, so I can uh, go back and so a pond with reflection is is I can go back to this to what I did and it remembers my original prompt. It these are the 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 options it gave me. It gave me that one. It gave me this one, which I liked, and then it gave me that one. Now, when you save it, you you still save all of these options. So the variations that it generated are still there. You can go in and you can remove one of them if you like this one, and you don't need 
this other one you can right click and just say delete and then your, your PDF will be smaller because you're getting rid of all of these extra options. So now I'm just left with the one that I want. Uh, I can flatten the whole thing and, and make the, my PDF smaller or PSD smaller. Um, but you know you, you, you can keep all of these things and if you just say pawn with reflection and you generate again you'll get three more variations. So the one I kept plus three new ones So there's another one, another one, and another one, and that's my. This is my original. So I mean, it's that's not a bad, not, not a bad reflection right there, between that one and this one. Might even like this one better. Okay, so back to our. The reason I brought up this this image is I'm just going to take this whole thing, and I'm just going to create a snapshot. Control, Alt, Shift, E. There we go. Now I have a snapshot of the whole thing, just in this one one layer. And the reason I wanted to do that, go away. I double click by mistake. So I wanted to do this business of let's generate something. So I will put something in, in her fingers or hands here, and I'll do something like this. And I'll say, let's say candle. And because of the shape I created, I'm going to get, I'm guessing, a short stubby cam candle because I, I, I've given it that shape. That's not too bad. Let's look at the other options. Okay, there we go. And that's not too bad at all. Okay, so now let's take this and just move it right up to the top. And let's start again. And I'm going to, this time, I'm going to try to get a long tapered candle. And so I'm actually going to, you know, I'm drawing on a, on a um, digitizing pad. And I'm going to say candle again. But because of the shape I've given it, I'm expecting I'm going to get a more tapered candle this time. Okay, so now see how important it is to, to, to give it a suggestive shape? Because you, you get a much different result. Than these ones. Okay, now when you do select a shape, what it's giving you, and I'll take all of these away. Notice the face and and some of that other stuff is still there, because I didn't I gave it an approximate shape. I didn't give it the actual candle, right? So that means if you wanted to change the candle to a red candle. You can't just turn around and, and, and put a, a, a color on top of that and, and you know just put a hue saturation and, and turn around and, and sort of you know, make the thing whoops you know start giving the, the, the whole thing a, a little bit of a color type thing because you know I'm, I'm coloring the wrong thing right now there we go and so I'm trying to color the candle, but you know, like you can see, the color is, is going to, to to you know a bunch of stuff. So you're going to have to turn around and reselect the candle and, and do stuff because it's it generates the entire outline that you you created. So now, if you're going to change your picture, for instance, I'm, I'm going to you know do something silly and and I'm going to change the uh, the size of the picture. And, and Would you it, have access to uh, you know select object or something like that? Well, just to so, so white farm? yeah. So this is where you you would have to turn around and, and start using a combination of tools. So I'm going to get rid of this thing here and delete that. And if I turn on object selection, and now I've got the whole thing. Now I see it, see how it, it picked up the the whole candle. 
can't find an object to subtract. No. Okay. So so it's 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 not really finding the object. So let me flatten the whole thing. Control Shift Alt E, and now let's see if it it finds. See, it found the candle better. Okay, uh -huh. that was your suggestion, and, and now I've got the candle. I've got her. I've got the water. I've got. I don't know what else it's 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 found, but I mean this is better now. It's got the whole candle and not just the. Um, it's got the, 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 the container as well. So, I mean, I could take that. I don't know what it's doing. I'm going to do a, a mask. And now I've got my mask. And I could turn around and, and you know, do the usual things. So I put it, take a brush, switch to black, and I can kind of, whoops. I can focus on just the candle. And now that I've got my candle, I can apply something like uh, doo -doo -doo, solid color, red, boom, make that a, okay, and use a screen, darken, uh, maybe something like that. That work. Yeah, so, you know, something, you know, and I can see my, my, my whoops, Z. My mask is not perfect, so I'm going to go back here and I can just go back to my brush and paint with white. Whoops. You got to paint the mask, not the picture. Come on. Ah, Mike. I'm trying to get back to my brush. Could you have used text, like uh, generate a red candle? So, it, to a degree, so let's go back to, uh, let's go back to generate object, object, uh, generate, generate, really, really. Where did we generate a fill? Here we go. That was our last lasso. And so, we can go back here and say, you know, um, red candle. <coughs> and, and, and sometimes you can get, you know, lucky and, and, and give it some, some, some information that, uh, that works. Uh, again, it's, it's, you know, its definition of a red candle might be a little different from ours, but that's not bad. But I mean, how does this fall into red candle? I don't know. It's got a red holder. <laughs> And there's sort of another, you know, red candle. So I mean, so you can, you're right. You can, you know, try to, to be suggestive and, and offer some stuff. Now, notice it's actually not bad. Distorted. Sorry, say that again. I said it's actually not bad. No, no, and I mean, you know, the, the amount of time I mean, it would take us to do this could, is. is it, I mean, the ultimate would be then you get the shape of the candle you want, and then if you could selectively keep that picture and just play with the color, like say, I want that candle, now make it a pale pink color or something, or, you know, uh, some some uh, Pantone <laughs> specified color or something like <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, so, and, and you know what? I suspect that's exactly where we're going to go. So if you look at the way ChatGBT works, and some of those AI models, they will keep your last reference and build on it. So if you were to say something yeah. like, you know, uh, how many how many nurses are there in the Big Apple? And it would turn around and say, what do you mean by Big Apple? And you'd say New York City, and it was, oh, okay. Uh, so searching how many nurses are in New York City, and you know, it would give you a number, and you'd say, you know, how many male? And it says, you know, I think you're asking me how many male nurses there are in New York City, as opposed to, you know, you're asking how many males there are in New York City. So, so it, it, it's building on its uh, on your your previous reference, and then every once in a while you can say, start fresh, and, and you can give it a whole new query. And I suspect that's exactly where we're going to go with with some of this stuff with uh, with Photoshop. But right now it's a single prompt and, and every prompt seems to be kind of random. You just, you know, you keep generating red candles till eventually you get something you like. Um, you can also play with the prompts, you know, long tapered candle or slim tapered candle or whatever. So again, this is kind of supposed to be red candle. 
that's kind of a little bit different and that's not too bad so you know so th this is like the, the kind of stuff that uh, is, is is doable okay so let's uh, let's keep going with some of our examples here so we have this one this one this one uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, don't worry about the hat. Okay. So this one here, my 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 example was was this was again sort of, sort of a wrinkle type thing, right? You know, I just just all of these 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 distractions that were down here, they, they were bothering me. And again, that would be a whole bunch of work to get rid of. And I just sat there with the eraser tool and just just walked over the uh, the, the the wrinkles, and I found that so much easier to do. Oops, and it was just kind of boop. This feature alone is worth the cost of admission here. Because wow. when, when, when you, when I, I do portraits with muslin backgrounds, and when they're not stretched very well, they're full of, it's not the person's clothing, it's the background is full of wrinkles. Yeah, yeah. And I, it's, I try to throw it out of focus, but it's never enough. And you can spend a lot of time retouching backgrounds. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Uh, and, with and the clone you know, tool, right? <laughs> and this, this, this looks like a really useful tool. And and, and if they want a portrait, they want seven seven. They, they select seven pictures uh, out of their portraits. You know, then you got to retouch the background seven times, type of thing. So yeah, uh, to save you time, I, right now I have this thing called remove after every stroke. So every time I do a stroke, it, it it cleans it up. Stroke cleans it up. You can actually remove that option, and then you can do something like this. And say you know this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. That little blotch there, that thing there, that. There's a little thread there that that shouldn't be there. And you know, let's, I'll just do this one for the sake. And now I say, okay, go ahead and do it all. And there you go. Sort of you know that one, that one. And go ahead and do it all. Click. So, so there's kind of the before and after. So, so I, I find this. So this is to me the use cases that I don't see right when when I go to the, the 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 YouTube videos and whatnot. You know, they're talking about removing you know whatever offense or this or that, and, and, and I'm going, yeah, but <laughs> I, I just want to remove little things like blemishes or or or, 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 or hair and stuff like that. So. Um, this is something I did at uh, the yeah. spring, spring fling. Um, Amy was one of the photographers, and so I took you know this photo, and then I just literally <laughs> didn't do that. I just I just I felt her camera needed to focus on something, so I just you know, and, and I did windsurfer. I don't know what else would be out in the water there. Sailboat. Uh, it'll be yeah, I, find, or something. I find the text is is really really teeny I gotta squint at my screen to to yeah. so I mean you know and, and and what's what's neat here is is pay attention to where the light is and the light intensity and and how the light is falling on the boat and you'll usually find that AI somehow figures out how the light is falling across your image and typically mimics that fairly successfully. So it's, it's, it's really neat. Now again, I mean, if I wanted to make that boat smaller, that's, that's a bit of a challenge, right? Because that whole, see now the sky doesn't match. And so it's a lot more work to, to so it's easier to just undo it and try to, to you know, um, redo it again just you know just make a smaller selection and then ask it to generate again but if you really really fell in love with this boat then we do what was suggested earlier you, you maybe maybe flatten this whole thing uh so control e you know get the whole thing oops accept flatten the whole thing then maybe try to make a selection out of it and where's my selection tool and then Magic Finder, so I make a selection of the boat. 
come on, come on, come on. It's really thinking. Uh, and now I just have the boat, if I'm not mistaken. There we go. So now I can get this thing and, whoops, wrong thing. Is that my boat? Yeah. I don't know why. Oh, okay. Uh, I think I know what I have to do. Okay. So I've got this mask and the mask is covering the whole screen, right? This is my whole mask. So I'm going to take this mask and apply it. Now I've just got a small sailboat. Now I can probably do something and, and move it and, and do stuff with it. So because of my original picture, I didn't have it. I generated it removed the other crap around it and now I can I can turn around and I can do what I what I want with the boat so I mean you know you're gonna learn to play with the tools and, and, and you know interact with them okay little Italy we were off doing stuff and I started really testing the uh, the tools so I want to start seeing just you know how far could I go with with some of this stuff so what I found is when I need to delete something that's too big it doesn't do a great I mean the little stuff is, is not bad and a little pylons over here is great and, whoops I, I have this thing turned on here okay so you replaced it with another car and thinking oh that's not what I want either so try just getting rid of that And so it's, it, it knows there's traffic here, so it's trying to generate, there we go, finally. And so, you know, that's got a little bit better. But I found that when I tried to do something, you know, like a big bus or something like that, it didn't do a great job. So it's kind of like, yeah, you know, what what the heck is this tree here that's doing there? And, and so I, this is where I, I found that I, I run into problems. But what I started doing is playing with these things and saying, okay, let's clean it up a little bit. And then once I've got something that kind of makes sense and it's not too, too bad, now I would turn around and go to generate a fill and say, okay, let's replace this stuff with something that kind of is a little bit maybe more more realistic and generate a fill and generate and see what it comes up with and if you if it's still coming up with cars and motorbikes and other things then you can try just saying sort of you know empty street or something along those lines you know that's not particularly nice you know, that's pretty blurry so so let's give it something specific like you know uh, city street And, you know, I'm still not crazy about that. You know, it's a little bit better. So a little bit of, you know, a little bit of finagling to, to get to, to where you need to go. So, I mean, so these, these tools are, you know, like in, for small stuff, not bad. But when you've got some, some other stuff, it, I don't always get the, the results I want. So I, I found when I was doing the, the horse in the pond, there was a lot of playing around with it. And, and you know, we, we got there. So we... So my eventual image was this one that I ended up with. So, uh, so this this is kind of a, you know, it, it's not the exact street that was there, <laughs> but it's 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 close enough to 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 make it, uh, you know, realistic. So if I go back to Lightroom and look at do 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 do, where is this one? Okay, so there's kind of before and after. So I started playing with some of those. So let's take a look at this one here. So I didn't really like her hand here. So I erased her hand and then it gave me something that wasn't too bad. But then I eventually had to refill the, the, the gown because the, the, it, it produced a gown that wasn't quite right. So it was a series of steps. 
to to get to to where I, would, I needed to go, but I, I I just I didn't. What's that? Photo has been changed. Blah 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 blah. blah. That's fine. And what's this? This was changed. And blah, blah. yeah, fine. Okay, so here's kind of like, and then I try to erase the hand, but like the the, the 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 gown wasn't quite right, so I, you know, I had it. Oh, oh sorry, the I, I adjusted some of the lighting on her bus line, and then I started playing and generated the um, just playing generated the the pattern on her dress a little bit more. So so this is kind of the before and after type thing, right? And you'll also notice on her face, boop, and I will zoom in. So again, the this is supposed to be a delete tool, but since it, it since it looks at the surrounding area and tries to replace the texture, I'm finding it's doing a good job. And just boops. And so nobody, nobody said this was supposed to be a um, a skin texture fixer upper. But I started playing with it, and, and, and being lazy like I am, I'm always looking for shortcuts. And, and I found that this this did a, a, a very acceptable job, and, and I'm not overly unhappy with the you know yeah. the skin texture that's leaving behind especially when uh, you're looking at things you know uh, other than uh, being able to do uh, several areas at once is this really all that different from the uh, spot healing brush well so they use different technologies okay so let me give you a really good example of that uh, let's see if I can find one I'm, I'm just talking about small things like, you know, picking out blemishes. It looks very much like using the spot healing brush, except, of course, you can do multiple areas. Yeah, but but in fact, uh, let's see, find a good example. Uh, do, do. I think, I think maybe this one. So where I found the, the difference is when you're getting in close, the spot, the, the spot healing brush kind of does a good job when there's nothing else around. Now, that didn't, that didn't give me what I wanted. Uh, okay, well, let's do something. So let's try spot healing brush, right? Let's use wherever it is, this one here, right? And I'm going to use a spot healing brush over here, and I'm going to try to to. I'm going to get rid of this this particular strand of hair. And that's not not a bad. And it left some of the texture. Okay, now let's go back and Control J. Get rid of this one. And now I'm going to go back, and now I'm going to use the Remove tool. And, and, and so this is a good, a good place where you can kind of experiment with the two of them and see, you know, which one, which one gives you sort of a, the, the thing that you're looking for. Oh, I forgot to do the click here because <laughs> I, I turned that, that, that other option off. Okay, so there's there's kind of the, the, the two of them side by side. And take a look at right here, the, this line that was here got smudged by the spot healing brush. And there's a little bit of smudging going on over here. And when you get close to the flower, the, the, the flower kind of just leaked into the, into the body. Whereas the remove tool, the flower stayed intact. This looks like it discolored, I don't know why. But the stitching that was here stayed intact. And so I, I'm, I'm finding, and, and I, I don't have to be as precise as well, because it, it figures out what I'm trying to do. So I, I oh, I'm, 
going to turn this back on. I keep forgetting to remove after every stroke type thing. There we go. So, so here I, I went from leaf to leaf and, and the line in between. Go back to the spot healing brush and and if I kind of get sloppy, oops, where I'm on the wrong thing. If I get sloppy and I try to go from here to here, see that little artifact that got generated here? I kind of, that's what I found the spot healing brush works good right here. That's a great place for spot healing brush. But if you want to use the spot healing brush, uh, let's see, if she had a, a hair across her eye, or it's that little, that little thing above her lip here, and I find that, you know, that's actually still not too bad. I mean, you can certainly do do a lot. Uh, let me find this other guy. This was this was one that I, I, I was amazed with at it in Adobe Photoshop. Uh, oh, 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 it's already cleaned up. And I, well, this is my JPEG. That's not what I want. Let's go back into my folder. Uh, where's my JPEG? Uh, sorry, where's my PSD? There's my PSD. Edit in Photoshop. Okay, so this is one where she had hair everywhere. And I was trying to clean that up and I ended up with that so how did I do that and let's again let's try I'll just do control J and let's use the the, 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 the the spot healing brush and, and let's just kind of just and, and it's keeping some of the texture it's not bad you know like so I don't know, and I don't know if Spot Healing Brush has been upgraded in conjunction with this this this, uh, this beta. Is my experience is when I was doing this type of thing, I would smear the the underlying texture. I think it has been improved quite a bit. Although this is a real challenge, I think this would be a bit much for Spot Healing Brush. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's I am using Spot Healing at the moment, and it is doing a good job actually. Right, and so I'm, I'm doing a little at a time. See, now this is where it gets tricky. It's it's you know, so this is where where you you, you want to experiment with with the tools. But I mean, bottom line is we we have more tools available to us. See, this is where now. Oh, okay, that it caught it. So this is starting to. The the, the texture starting to to break up here a little bit. Okay, and so let's just take get rid of all of this. Let's go back to J. And now we'll go to the remove tool. And I'll do the remove after. Whoops. And I don't want to do too much at a time because what I found is being lazy as I tried doing the whole thing at once and it didn't work so I will we'll, we'll demonstrate that in a moment. It depends on the speed of your computer too. Say that again please. It depends on the speed of your computer. Oh I yes how fast it goes but but uh, That's right. I don't think the the speed of your computer affects you know this type of thing so I I, I tried doing something like that and I found that it just didn't it didn't respect the texture underneath. It was just too much. I mean, you know, like not bad. <laughs> not bad, but I mean you, you can see that in some areas it, it, it didn't the texture starting to get get uh, impacted. 
So you know, this is where you, you can now you start to play with it a little bit more. It was a pretty good start, though. Well, it actually did better the first time I tried it. I kind of went, eh, it was really bad, you know. Like it, so, it it's oops. I keep forgetting about this stupid thing because I don't usually use that. But I, I, what I ended up doing, I did it a little at a time. So I, 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 I removed some hair, retained the texture. Remove more hair, and so the texture. I had more and more texture as I was going along. And, and so I mean, this is you know, and look how how sloppy that was. And still, it 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 has a tendency to 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 to, to figure out what it is I'm trying to do. And I'll just turn that on. And, and then, you know, and, and I just, I'm, I'm just cleaning stuff up and I'm going willy nilly here and it, it just seems to know what I want to do. I think one key is to do a little bit at a time rather than trying to, uh, you know, do a big yeah. massive area. Yeah. So, but I mean, you know, some stuff like this, like cellulose, you know, type of thing and, and to, to just say, you know, clean that up for me, please. And, and like, wow. A little bit of a, a funky thing happening with her arm there. Like, <laughs> you know. So I, 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 I'm pretty amazed at just, you know, I, I end up just cleaning up stuff without really thinking about it. And it, it's, it's generating stuff that I consider to be Quite good. So like zero, and then so you know, I mean, just I mean that that didn't take us very long. Whoops. Right. And that's just cleaning up. And so so look at her arm here in terms of the 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 the, the, the bruising or whatever she had and, and that type of thing. So I I'm I'm finding this type of stuff very very uh, very advantageous. Okay, so let's talk about the generative fill because the the, the the removal tool I think is, is is pretty handy and and you know you can do a lot of stuff, deal with blemishes, uh, clean up you know like weeds and and, and things like that. Uh, you know there's a funny little leaf here. You know like if you consider that leaf distracting, you can just you know get rid of that type of thing, and so that 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 leaf is gone. It's taking too long. Let's move on. There we go. So, so it, it just replaced it with more of the same foil uh, foliage that that, that is, is is somewhere else. All right. So let's go back to here and let's go back to. All right. So and no, I want my AI folder. There we go. All right. So uh, so here. I used the generative fill. These reddish flowers just didn't fit in with the daisies. So again, I just I, I went ahead and just replaced it with, with daisies. So I just selected that whole area and I just says generated fill and it generated it. I selected a little area above her hand and I said butterfly and it just added a butterfly. So that, you know, this is kind of the before and after. It looks like there's another area down here that I did as well. Okay, and so let me give you some new examples. So I've been dealing a lot with people because I shoot people a lot. I know we have a number of nature photographers in the group. So let's talk about this is my, my shot and I unfortunately clipped the bottom of the leaf here a little bit. And I said, oh darn, I mean, I wish, wish I hadn't done that. And so I, I ended up with this image. So what were, what were my steps? And it was pretty straightforward. Doot, doot, doot. And I think I had to, okay, this has already been ex extended. so. I think this was, let's go back to something like this, where I clipped it. Okay, so this is 
more or less where I, I started off. So this is an example where I, I just turned on my cropping tool, I drag this out, and here I'm going to say, well, actually let's, let's delete the, 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 the pixels because I, I don't want to confuse it and, and let it delete pixels, boom. Okay, so now when I add my cropping tool and I bring it out, there's nothing there. It, it, it doesn't know what, what to put there. So here's where I started using Content-Aware Fill. And I said, okay, let's see what Content-Aware Fill does for me. And, and, and it, it didn't do anything. That's not right. Oh, I still have default. Hang on a second. Content to work fill. Oh, why isn't it giving me? There we go. I was on the wrong layer. All right, so now I'm going to say crop, extend. Content to work fill is turned on. Say OK. And it's going to go ahead and generate something that probably makes sense. But it's just continuing. It has no knowledge of. of, of flowers. It doesn't know about leaves. It just continues patterns and colors. So I found it better to go ahead and just say default extend the whole thing. Now I would say select all of this and I just say generate and generate. And it knows this is a flower and it knows this is a stem and it knows there's probably is supposed to be a stem underneath here. And so it's going to generate something that makes a lot more sense. Look at that. And it gave me some variations. Slightly blurred bottom here. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. It, it wow, definitely. that's good. So I mean, you know, like it, it, it knows to to figure out, you know, there should be there should be an end to this leaf. It doesn't go forever. And then as a as a photographer, if you want to go ahead and start cleaning things up, then you can use your your delete tool and, and this is where or, or content aware fill or whatever you guys want to use. And, and I'm just kind of just cleaning up, you know, little blemishes and, and, and you know, the perfect nature specimen, right? <laughs> right. So there's some 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 pretty pretty sophisticated smarts to figure out where the end of this this thing is. So. Here is another example and edit, do, 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 edit in Photoshop. So here's another nature example. Now, oh, is this my JPEG again? Um, do, do, do. All right, I picked up the wrong file. My apologies. No, oh, this is a, this is a raw. I want my oh here's my PSD. Okay, edit in Photoshop. I should probably close some of those other things, right? <laughs> Photoshop's going to get a little bit. So what I did is I was outside, handheld, uh, the wind was blowing this leaf and this moth or butterfly or whatever the hell it is, was, was kind of just in and out of focus, in and out of focus. So I went and took a whole bunch of individual pictures. And so, actually, let me just, I'll just get rid of these things. Boom, boom. So I did something called focus stacking. I took a whole bunch of pictures and picture one, picture two, picture three, and, and you know, depending on where the wind was blowing and so on and so forth, different things were in and out of focus. So I put all of these pictures together, one on top of the other. I said to Photoshop, 
align these, whoops, I got to select all of them. I went over here to, to Photoshop and I said align these images and uh, where that wherever that is auto align layers and then after I line them all I said auto blend layers and I just used this stack uh, option and what it did is it it went and found the sharpest part of every one of these images so for this image that was the sharpest part. For this image, that was the sharpest part. Uh, for this image, whoops, come on. So that, so it took little pieces from each image. And you found little bits of sharpness in every one of these places, and then eventually built the whole image. And so this is my, my consolidated image. Okay, so now I've got my, my consolidated image. And oh, by the way, this is my consolidated image. And then I put a border around the whole thing. And I just use content aware fill and it filled the whole thing in. But it still wasn't quite right. This poor moth had a little piece that was missing. And I went, oh, damn, you know. So this is where, again, using the smarts of generative fill, I just said, you know, could you kind of fix this for me, please? And say, I generate and generate. And it goes away and it says, I don't know what you want me to do, but let me see if I can do something that'll make you happy. And it has to figure out what kind of bot this is and what its wing shape is and, and you know, so on and so forth. And so there's one option. Whoops. It put it in the wrong spot. There we go. So there's option one, option two, and option three. Take a look at those those options. So you pick the one that you like best, and there's your there's your completed moth, as opposed to you know a little a little bitten thing. I don't know. Is that still photography? You know, uh, is is that an AI moth or is that a real moth with a little bit of AI embellishment? Uh, you know, in the old days, we'd go find another moth that we had and maybe copy a piece of the wing or maybe use the clone stamp tool to try to rebuild the wing. So I, I, I'm just amazed that it, it can figure out accurately what that, that moth, you know, uh, should look like. All right, so uh, let me see if I have any more examples here. So here's another kind of interesting example. Um, mother, daughter that were in, in front of the pool and I just I found there was a number of distractions that I, I, I wanted to get rid of. That's just Photoshop's behaving quite well, right? Okay, so I mean here this is too much to delete. So I, I literally, you know, I just went ahead and, and just grabbed that fence line and this stuff over here. And it just says generate and generate and I know it's going to generate something that's something to do with grass and, 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 uh, and trees. Uh, in the chat, uh, Michelle asks about background replacement. I think a lot of us would be interested in that. For example, could you put this mother daughter on a beach? <laughs> Uh, okay, so let's so let's talk a little bit about that. And now I can take this little area here, and I can generate something over here as well. And you know, just so that the staircase or whatever it was. And I think I, in in when I actually did it, I didn't do generate. I actually um, I I think I erased that, and and it did a good job. I have no idea what generate's going to do. But I mean, you see, it, it just generated something else. So I'm not happy about that. That's a little bit better. And that's really weird, right? So, anyway, so there's that that type of thing. Okay, so let's do background replacement. Let's turn around and go and select. So let's get rid of all of this stuff. Oops, and to here, and delete all of those layers. Okay, so there's our background. All right, so now let's do some a little bit of magic and say select subject. Now there's two whoops, there's two forms of select subject. There's select subject locally, and then you can say select subject in the cloud. 
Okay, so now I've, I've got the cloud selected. So when I say select subject now, this will discard your current selection, blah, blah, blah. Yes, good. So it's going to go away and think about it, and it's going to come back and... Okay, and so now if I just do create a mask, so there's my, my mask, and is it great? I don't know. It's not bad. There's a little bit of funky stuff happening with the hair. And, uh, you know, I, it says, you see the line is below her, her, her arm, but her arm is actually properly selected. I don't know where that line comes from. This is, a, this is another one of these. It's trying to find a delineation between the two subjects, but for now, this is great. So now I've got everything selected. Whoops. And so I'm going to, I've got this whole whole thing done. Uh, I'm going to control shift N and I'm going to select so I hit control and I clicked on the mask and that selected the ladies. Alright so now I'm going to invert that selection control shift I. Now the, the marching ants are on the outside and so I have, I've selected everything but the ladies. So I'm going to generate something like um, beach. Sandy beach. Uh, sandy beach, what do I want to say here? Sandy beach. Um, Let's just do Sandy Beach and see what see what it, it does. With a palm tree. <laughs> so this is going way beyond sky replacement, right? We're 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 into a whole different world. So there's option one. There's option two, and there's option three. And the selection wasn't fabulous, but that's kind of interesting. Now, how? Okay, so her original hand wasn't well selected. So I'd have to do a little bit of playing around. But, I mean. There we go. I'd have to. to, 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 to uh, play with that, but I mean, what happens if she buried her hand in the sand or something like that? I mean, just let's. I just want to play around with this now, and we're just going to do this. You know. And yeah, I mean, you know, it looks, looks like her hand's a little bit buried in the sand or something. I don't know what some of this blue stuff is. Now somebody else was saying if you have some funky stuff that isn't quite right, you can turn around and replace it. So let's look at this hair for instance. And this is kind of looking a little disheveled or, or, or whatever. Oops, let me go this way. So what happens if I take this hair and I just I say I want to replace this. Just generate something. Now, that, now it might be generate too much hair because I've got a big selection. So if that doesn't work, my next step would be to clone this sky into her hair, and then generate a much smaller selection. That's not bad. There you go. So yeah, you're you're fixing a selection now just by regenerating it. Okay, this looks a little funny here, so I'm gonna use my my delete tool, and whoops, and I want to go here, and use my delete tool, and I'm gonna do something like. I mean, you know, like
like that's uh, pretty spiffy thinking of, in, in terms of what it's doing. A little bruise here. Okay, I'm not sure what this thing is. There's a little bit of blue kind of coming through her hair here. And when I'm getting close to eyes and stuff like that, I'm going, I don't know if this is going to work. But so not not what I had in mind. Undo, try it again. And if I don't have success with the the the, gen, the delete tool, that's yeah, getting better. Then the, the next thing I might do is just try generating. don't know if the eye is really right but I mean at a distance it doesn't look too too bad so uh, whoever asked the question about background replacement yeah, yeah thank, thank you. you it was pretty good <laughs> it's kind of like <laughs> you know uh, I mean it's how long would that composite have taken right so let's just close down a couple of these things no no I just don't want to save any of this stuff. No. No. Oh, okay, I didn't do this one. Uh, oh, well, it doesn't matter. So here's an example of... That was my original image. And then when I was able to... We'll do the, 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 the usual... We'll do the usual boop delete uh, delete crop pixels there we go so they're gone so here's an example again where I use generate a fill content aware fill uh, where I need to be here content aware fill and I my first attempt was to put content aware fill and it gave me some weird hat because it just replicated the colors and I went nah, that's not what I want so again, I, I just kind of, I said, no, no, I need, I need to fill that properly. Thank you very much. Generate. And it knew enough about the hat to, 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 to fill that in. <laughs> it continued the poll <laughs> and there's another one and so it's, it's continuing the poll in this particular case so I mean you know we know what to do right <laughs> and, and where's my delete And off we go and there you go and now I did this the other thing I did is I just did this and I missed a spot here and I just said grass so I mean the ability to 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 just you know touch up your images you know refine things is, is, is just it's come a long long way and, and again this is all beta software so you know no yeah maybe I don't know and yeah I don't know a little closer but I mean it's still not quite what I want I could just generate again and, and you know till it gives me something that I'm, I'm happy with And you could try other things like, you know, uh, unkept grass or pasture grass or, or, or something like that. And so, well, let's see, that's way too nice, low mode manicure, manicured lawn. And so, so it's, it's keeping the path, which is interesting because I ended up with this, uh, this grass. So I'm not sure what I did a little different, but 
you can see, you know, like just by selecting a little differently, different prompts. And my prompt here, whoops, where's, yeah, this is my prompt. Oh, I just kept it. So I'm just looking to see if I, I didn't keep my original prompt. This is the, the one we just did with all of these vari variations, but mine's just above it. It, it, yeah. yeah, this one's not bad. So some of them, it gets the perspective and the the apparent kind of lens distance wrong. But like this one, this one's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. So so and I, I didn't keep because I'm trying to keep my P, my PSD small. I, I didn't keep all the other options. So and no and no. That sombrero is kind of really weird. Yeah, so the kinds of stuff that you can do is is, is, is pretty pretty fascinating. Uh, and what didn't I do? So here's another quick example. Uh, so, you know, know how the, in, in Photoshop, uh, sorry, uh, Instagram and Facebook, you know, you can't have any nudity, blah, blah, blah. So I, I, I had this image and I kind of went, oh, darn, you know, like, I'd li I really like the image, I like to post it. I literally just selected the area over her nipple and I just said generate. And, and I have a completely different image and it's completely Facebook friendly. And uh, it took me 30 seconds <laughs> to literally bring it into Photoshop, select a little bit of the material, a little bit of the bust line and, and say generate and, and I had I had a new new a new uh, image. So there's the hat chopped off, there's the 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 sky. Uh, this is just a busy the car in the background the the the, the blue fence line uh, the, the 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 pole telephone poles just a typical shot but i mean the horses you can't pose them they, they just go where they go and you got to deal with the background and so i just did a little bit of cleanup with the delete tool and the generate tool and just ended up with a, a much sort of more more pleasant pleasant shot um glasses reflection on the glasses went in there with the delete tool and just deleted the reflection. Nothing special. So so the bottom line is you can use these delete tools for a lot of stuff and not just um, deleting a person or deleting a car or deleting a, you know, like the ability to just deal with very small detail is very nice. I selected the, the floor here and I just said generate so that it would generate, come on, I selected the floor and just said generate and it just got a, a, a bigger reflection, which is all I was looking for. So the puddle wasn't big enough. Uh, this, I, like I did the hair, I deleted a little at a time. So the wood texture just kept, you know, I got, you know, you just delete the one and more wood texture appears. You delete the six and now you got more wood texture and, it, and the wood texture just keep going and going and going until eventually it ends up with, with something overall. I did try a, a generate, let's select the whole thing and just generate a wooden beam. But I got, you know, polished wood beam that was, you know, befitting of a, a sail ship, you know, like, ah, that's not what I want. You try barn door, barn wood, and yeah, you start to write a lot of different prompts. And, and you find, like, the ability to select stuff is, is not quite, not quite there. So uh, let's do this one here. And... Then I'll go to, to some fantasy stuff like uh, Alice in Wonderland and background replacement, stuff like that. Uh, so this is edit in Photoshop. And this is another, this is a good example of where I found if you, if you didn't, um, if you start to include faces, it, it, it doesn't do a really good job. And there's my picture. I'm going to go here. And I'm just going to say, you know, water and reflection. Whoops, I didn't spell that right. So let's see how AI deals with bad spelling. <laughs> Ah, the game is on. <laughs> Okay, so that wasn't water and reflection. 
Uh, that's kind of water in reflection, but it's not exactly giving me what I want. All right, so let's try pond or river. River and reflection. So somebody said, how long did it take you to generate that river? And I says, it took me a few oopses. Because you, know, you, you tried it a couple of different ways and, and you, you, you do it over and over again. And so, I mean, that's not too bad. Now, the, actually, the mouth isn't too bad here because it, it, it kind of kept some of the original mouth. So that's kind of okay. Uh, here, see the, the mouth got cut off and, and it, you replace it with the river and, and the mouth and, and the, they're, they're not matching very, very well. And then this is probably a little bit better. This is, you know, so I found I had a lot of problems with the mouth. So I ended up having to play with, you know, the selection and then select around the horse and make sure I didn't select any of its snout and then back again. And, and so it took me a couple tries to get the, the horse just the way I, I wanted it. But, you know, like this isn't a bad shot. Now, pay attention to the fact that it's reflected the, the clouds. Uh, if there's trees over here that's reflected in the water, like it, it's 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 put a lot of thought into you know reflections uh, that are going along, and then you know you can you can play with this a little bit and you can add something like uh, ripples, you know. So now you can you can refine it. A little bit, anyways. Uh, I, I'm not so skilled with layers, but I, I I imagine you could be doing this background replacement, or in this case, foreground replacement on another layer. You still have the original, and you could paint back in a bit of the horse's mouth from the original. Yeah, layer. exactly. So in fact, okay. what happens when you generate something is there's a there's a there's an extra layer that gets generated. Okay, it's great. Completely, yeah. It's completely separate from the other one. So, so yeah. here's the original, and here's the other layer on top. Okay, okay, wonderful. So it always generates an extra layer. So it, so if you needed to, you could kind of just pick up a little bit more of the, the, the horse. So, so if you see here, it, it actually kept, I don't know if it kept some of the original. If I were to erase this, some of the original horse would come back. So there's my, there's my and so the, the 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 new layer of, with the replacement is not, I guess, what in Photoshop they call a smart layer. Like, if you then went in and erased that hydro pole, it wouldn't fix the reflection. You'd have to have fixed the hydro pole first. Uh, you're absolutely correct. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So that this pole, you know, over here is is, is you know. Uh, if it's being reflected, uh, I don't know if it is, I guess maybe that's it over here. Uh, yeah, then, yeah. yeah, you, you want to clean that up first and then do your reflection afterwards. Right, right. okay. Yeah. Okay. okay, so let's, uh, and so we'll, we'll do this, this fantasy thing here and then we'll wrap up because this is, you know, the, the funky donkey stuff. So here's a, the original shot and I will put this one, is this a PSD? Yeah, it's a PSD and this one's a PSD. So we'll edit those two in Photoshop. You mean you weren't really there? No, I'm afraid not. I was. I was, uh, let's see, yeah, so I was there. <laughs> All right, so this was the original image. We just did a select subject. And away we go. And so now it's, it's, it's put a little dotted line around there. Then I just turn on my, um, 
my mask down at the bottom here. So include included the mask. And so this is my and then so you end up isolating just the subject. And then I think what did I end up doing here? No, that's not it. So I think I then went and selected all of her. Where is she? Control. Okay, so I select her, control shift I. So now I've selected everything but her. And so I can just turn around and say, you know, Alice in one Wonderland uh, picnic picnic um, scene and see what it generates. But one of the challenges is if you, you're almost right and then you want to change something and, and you want to modify it, it's kind of tough to regenerate the same thing. So, I mean, this is not quite what I want. That's not what I want. You know, and so, you know, this is not quite what I'm looking for. Right? But I mean, these are, are interesting, <laughs> but it, it, it's, a, it's a different backdrop altogether, right? Something along those lines. And so... So it's a little little tricky so you can kind of you can keep generating this kind of stuff but I think I ended up with uh, this is a, a situation where I am pretty sure I went did I go and get this backdrop let me just check here I'm wondering if I went and got this backdrop and just put her on top whoops Put her on top so now you've got a composite and now you're just putting in some brambles changing the coloring more coloring and, and that's just the, the the new stuff so this is kind of like going and getting some some pieces and i'm trying to figure out i'm trying to remember how i how i went about going, doing this because in some cases you 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 play with different things let me just see if I can get this picture. There's a lot of that table behind her that, you know, that she's blocking. So I would say that, you know, this is a composite with, you know, with something. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it, it, I went and got this image and I put her on top and then I added some of the brambles yeah. and other stuff with, with generative fill. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you're probably right. I'm sitting here thinking, you know, like, how did I do this? And kind of like, you know, <laughs> now I remember this one here, definitely this picture I know I went and got this was the original. Not that. Not that. There we go. This one. Come on. This I went and found on the internet. And, and I, I, I kind of liked the, 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 the thing. And I had this, which was fine. And then I kind of went, oh, this is kind of cool. So then I went and selected her. Um, how do they do this? Oh, I'm going to have that song stuck in my head all night now. <laughs> About the hookah smoking caterpillar. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so you, you, you can... Let's do this. So let's select our subject here. select everything but the subject so now I have everything now I'm going to bring this picture up and now I'm going to subtract hit the alt key no there's selection and I'm going to subtract and I'm not doing a very good job but I'm just going to try to subtract this stuff here And I'm just going to test to see if I did this right. I'm just going to create a new layer. And then I'm going to take a brush and I'm just going to have black. So I can go there, I can't go there, and I can go there. So I, I, I know I'm, I've, I've selected the right stuff. So I'm just making sure that 
what I've selected and what I haven't selected is, is good. So I can then turn around and say generate uh, Alice in one Alice, not I V A L I C E, Wonderland Forest Scene. So it's going to generate everything except her and the caterpillar. But what are the prompts you used for the generation? I don't remember. <laughs> no, that's, I don't like that one. Nah, it didn't quite fit. Yeah, not quite what I'm looking for. And so I'll just say Alice in Wonderland. I'll just get rid of the word forest and see if it generates something, you know, less foresty and, and, and fits the caterpillar in a little bit better. You did point out, though, Mike, that uh, the ability to reproduce every time, you know, is just not there because it's it's somewhat uh, random, right? Yeah, yeah, it, it's <laughs> other stuff. I suppose if you got something that was almost what you wanted, but it still needed some work, you could do a merge visible to new layer and then, uh, you know, go from there and, and make tweaks and, you know, even, you know, keep piling on that way if you want to. Yeah, yeah. That lady has three arms there. Oh, yeah. So, so this is where when I said faces and people and stuff like that, it, it really doesn't do a great a great job. It, I, it's, it's, I believe this is called a hallucination in AI. <laughs> Good point. So, so I, it's 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 not giving me what I'm looking for. Kind of new, new, new. So we're, we're playing around. So uh, somebody said you can build it up in layers. So you can certainly do that. So you can do something like uh, whoops, put him back. You can do something like uh, over here. You know, uh, let's say he's sitting on a big uh, fantasy mushroom or something like that. Not quite. Yeah. So, so you know, you, you're starting to see sort of the challenges with with you know getting some of this stuff you know put together. So it's it's a little bit of hit and miss. But I mean, you know, this is where you know from a fantasy perspective, I, I, I this is not where I use the tool. So I mean, I was able to do some some interesting things. But I mean, it's, it's it was a lot more hit and miss to 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 get. Do, do they have anything in the tool that it, it's not so much generating? new elements or replacing elements in the image but that changes the overall look with text prompts rather than you know like rather than hue saturation curves to to create a mood it kind of you just kind of tell it create a somber sort of a <laughs> so that there are matrix mood for example or uh, yeah not quite uh, so there's there's a couple of techniques for, for for doing that so thanks for bringing that up like uh, luminar, luminar neo, neo has, something has something called relighting you can kind of change the direction or fill lighting in the foreground or background and I was wondering if there's AI attempts at that yeah so here is uh, edit in so I'll bring this one up. 
So the this one was I, I was just playing around with with getting rid of my shadow. Whoops, where where did that go? So that was just I was taking this photo and my shadow was there and I I couldn't go anywhere. I mean I'm I'm on rocks and and, and if I move back I'm I'm in the water. So 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 I, I needed to to get rid of my shadow. So this is where I ended up. But to answer your question, there's an interesting technique and it's again some other videos some other people came up with this so you come up here you generated a brand new channel and you get that channel a color somewhere around 30 the blackness level is 41 percent there's 30 percent you know 36 so somewhere around uh somewhere around between 30 and 45 and so that's the, the the color I'm looking for and oops so I want to create this gray square of intensity or darkness level 34 35 and now I'm going to hit control and click on this alpha and it's trying to select this gray area and it says well th there's nothing here there's no pixels that are more than 50 percent visible yeah we know that so you've selected this area that's 45% visible or 40 whatever whatever number I ended up with. Then I click back on RGB and I go back to layers. Mm -hmm. Now, so what you've really done is you've selected the whole canvas, a channel of which was just gray. And now you can turn around and do something like you were saying and say generate a fill and I'm just going to say something like um, Pastel water color. And, and this, this, this business of selecting this light gray is important because that's how you retain the original image. And for some reason, the darkness, whether you pick 30%, 35, 40, 45, you see, look at this. So it, 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 it didn't quite it's pastel-y but it, it, it altered some elements of the of the picture so so it's this is you know it, it, it bottom it, it didn't do a, a faithful job so we can turn around and we can go back to our channel change it to a slightly different color and I, I can't remember I think the closer you are to the closer you are to 50 the the more accurate it is I'm trying to remember select no all right so I'm hitting alt and then backspace to just color the whole it, I just to fill the whole thing in select control select so I want to get this message you definitely want to get this message and then if people are interested in this technique I'm going to get rid of this and delete that I don't want it to interfere and I'm going to say, what did I call it? The other one, pastel. And if you don't do this, select the whole layer, create a new channel, that whole rigmarole, it just creates a random pastel picture. I mean, it, it doesn't maintain any yeah so it, it's it's changed the picture a whole bunch so i mean it, and if you that's the problem if you 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 don't have the right intensity so it's 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 trying to change the the the, the picture but it's it's not maintaining a lot of the the original content so that was go back here and we can try it one last time and what did we do oh See, we have an extra mask here. I don't know if that interfered or not. I'm not quite sure what you're trying to do here. Uh, we're just trying to turn this this, this picture into a, um, a, a, a... Just change the artistic style of that picture. So you can just take that picture that we had and turn it into a, an oil painting or, or a watercolor or a, or a, a charcoal ink uh, picture. You know, so you're just you're taking the picture and turning it into something else using AI and uh, it's a lot of finagling to, to, to get that to, to, to work the way you want. And I'm going to go down to... eight percent. OK. 
okay. And so I'll select the whole thing. And go back to lay oops, go back to layers and I'm gonna get rid of this. I don't want any of this other stuff to interfere. And So I, we're just trying to give it a, a little bit of a, now there's another tool. We'll let this do, see if this, this helps. I, I'm, I'm forgetting it. What, how, how dark you have to make the, um, the other piece. Yeah, that's, this see, it's, it's, this is like, blah, it's watercolor thing, but I mean, I can, I can reduce the, the, the intensity of it, but I mean, it's, 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 it's it's really not designed for that. Some people can do it. I will find a video that I, I discovered that somebody else was uh, putting together. And they, they walked through this whole process of, you know, how dark to create this alpha channel, and whether it should be, you know, 45 versus, you know, 12. And uh, then they turn around and, and once they've created it, they, they augment it with some of these filters uh, where they filter do, 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 render and there's a whole bunch of of, uh, of galleries uh, stylized you know oil painting solarize you know uh, in, embossed there's a whole bunch of things that you can you can do I think we can't hear you Mike oh what happened Okay, better? You must have hit the button somewhere. Yeah, Mike, you seem to be moved. You're muted according to the uh, display here. Yeah, just give me a second. You need to unmute yourself. You're on mute, Mike. Am I unmuted yet? Full screen. Maybe he can't hear you too, either. No. There we go. Better? Yes, you're, you're oh, now you're good. good. Okay. And back to screen sharing. We're good? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so um, yeah, so I, I, I can't remember how to do that. I know there's a whole bunch of other things you could do uh, back in Photoshop land. You can go to, where's Photoshop, 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 there it is. Back in Photoshop land, there's a bunch of filters that are called neural filters. And one of those neural filters is copy another style. So you could do something like style transfer and you could I'll have to download it. I don't have it. And what it does is it it, it takes a certain image and uh, applies a certain style to it. Yeah, so that's what I that's, that's really what I was getting at. Yeah, yeah. like a lighting yeah. style or uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, coolness or something, you know. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now there's two different styles. There's there's color transfer, which means you you show a picture one, and it copies yeah. Yeah. that toning and colorization and, and, and whatever yeah, yeah. To, to another image and then there's the style transfer whereby you can you know I, I want this sort of uh you know whatever type of paint strokes or whatever those things are and it's processing and it's taking forever but it's it's you can see it kind of just progressing there chug 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 Anyways, while so while that's happening, so we'll 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 wrap up here, um, folks. Uh, I encourage you to just experiment. You know, like th there's a whole noble to you now that you can you can use to 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 do your work. And it's not a question of not photographing. It's just a question of uh, using the, the the tools you have to 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 embellish and enhance and refine 
uh, with greater ease, you know. So you know, why dig a ditch with a with a spoon when you can use a shovel? And why use a shovel if you can use a <laughs> a backhoe <laughs> type of thing? So uh, we, we've just been given a backhoe, and, and we don't have to do use a shovel anymore. So uh, I don't know that this uh, did it. Uh, did it do? Uh, it? You're muted you're again, muted Mike. Again, Mike. Oh. The AI wants the to AI take wants control to and it's control muting you. It's muting you. <laughs> that must be it. That must be it. Yeah. Okay, I'm on, I'm I'm back. You're back. You're back. If that's really yeah. you. If that's really you. It is. Uh, so, uh, there's a keystroke, and I remember I mentioned the space bar or something that was uh, you can unmute and mute yourself. So I'm hitting something. Uh, double tap or something that's causing me to go mute. So, so something I'm doing with my tablet or whatever is, is, is causing me to go mute. So uh, what I was doing is as I'm going to this thing and I'm trying to get some sort of a preview of this image and I don't know, it doesn't look a whole lot different to me. Okay, I believe you've stopped sharing the screen now though. Ah, okay, you're right. There you go. All right, it's all back. All right, it's all back. It says processing on device, and it's you know like I don't see any difference in terms of what it's doing. Style opacity one hundred percent, detail one hundred percent. Maybe if I reduce the detail, I don't know. So, anyways, there's a there's a bunch of different styles here. You can see some of them are very. Uh, and it takes a while to process each one of these. But Mike, uh, how are those any different than from, uh, not actions, but presets and things that we can get left or right or do it ourselves? Like, uh, is there an advantage? Um, so these are a little bit more sophisticated. So think of it this way. A preset is on a pixel by pixel basis. And it's saying if this pixel is blue, make it a little bit brighter. If this pixel is black to darken it. If this pixel is, you know, red, then, you know, add, add saturation. Some of these actions will start to blend pixels together. It'll add brush strokes. So it'll start blurring pixels together and, and it'll, you know, it'll create the equivalent of a brush stroke, like make it look like a, a little bit of a, an oil painting or, or it'll start um, changing the texture of your, your your picture and so so it's it's not quite the same at all as as just a, a um like a filter or a preset or something like that the, these go well beyond the, the that type of capability so uh, i mean look at you know something like this i don't know why let me just cancel this and i'm wondering if I need to do it. There we go. Let's get rid of it. Come on. I'm just going to delete this. And I'm just going to change my image canvas size. And I'm just going to make it smaller uh, just so things go faster. way too small okay that's not what I want okay I'll tell I'll do it this way I will crop come on delete pixels boom okay I just wanted this to be a lot smaller and then if I go back to filter and I'm just trying to change some of these things neural filter So skin smoothing, smart portrait, etc. So let's go back to style transfer and see if it goes a little bit faster here. Halfway done, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so I mean, you're not gonna get this stylization with, with, with a, uh, a filter. Okay, you're just getting something completely different. 
Yeah, that's so, that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. So now, and I'll just change the style completely. And you'll see, like the level of texture is different. I mean, you know, you can you can get some some very interesting effects. See, like that, it's actually added some texture to the rocks and, and and started blending things a little differently. So so you're you're getting some very very different. Uh, Is that done in layers or is it destructive? Uh, so it says here, how do you want to output this? To the current layer or, and I'll, I'll look at the other options, and I think new layer is, is another way of doing it. So it's, it's non-destructive. And do you want new layer to be smart, you know, type of thing. So it's a smart layer or not. So you have some, some options there. And we'll let this finish and come on, come on, come on. Okay, so I mean, this is, you know. More dramatic. More dramatic. Yeah, and again, I mean, so you want a lot of detail and I can bring the detail down. And if you bring the detail down, then all of a sudden the, the pixels start blending a little bit more. This, this shadow over here looks a little strange. You know, all of these little dots in the middle of the shadow. But you see how, how the, the back, the, the and you know, so some of the stuff you know, saturation and whatnot is is can be done. But I mean, that this is a very different picture from new layer. So I mean, this is, you know, you do some interesting things, and then there's there's the usual filters as well that you you had as well so that you can always do. Uh, do, do, do. Filter gallery. So I, if you if you're in eight bit, then you get more filter gallery stuff. And let's go to hundred percent. Let's go fill, fit, 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 fit. And now you you here you've got all kinds of, of you know. Uh, Rough pixel, poster edge, sponge, uh, distort, brush strokes. So I mean, you've got some very, very different um, effects that are, are happening here. This is getting really artistic, I guess. Yeah, and and there's all kinds of third-party products you can buy that have these things, you know, already, you know. Is that all yeah. part of the uh, beta as well? No, this is actually stuff that was there years and years ago. The, the, the stuff that I'm showing you here has been around for many, many years. Oh, okay. I didn't realize that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Colored pencil. Yeah. So you, you, we're, just, we're just introducing new things on top of the old things. So, yeah. So you... The, the size of your brush starts to change the level of detail. And then if you got a very small brush, like an artist painting with a very small brush, then you get a lot more detail. And, you know, add texture, remove texture. Yeah, so this stuff has been here a long, long time. Now, what you might not see it because I'm just going to hit cancel. One of the things that happens is if your image is uh, mode, most of our us shoot at 16 bit. So you actually got to go down to 8 bit for some of these filters to work because they were introduced such a long time ago. They only were created and processed 8 bit images. Oh, okay. So, so filter gallery doesn't appear if I go to image 16 bit. Filter gallery is, 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 is grayed out. Okay, that's uh, that's good to know. Yeah, so you need to you need to be in in eight bit mode, and now you can go to filter gallery and you have all these additional things to 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 play with. And go back to it. And so you know, uh, texture, you know, a stained glass texture, you know, and then you can change the size, the cell size. We're, we're, we're well off the, the, the AI <laughs> discussion, but yeah, so, but there's no thought to this stuff, right? The, 
the, the difference between this is it looks the pixels and mathematically applies whatever you're, you're asking it to do. Um, and it, it's doing that just with pure algorithms. You know, if this, then that, if this, then that. Whereas with AI, you presented a butterfly and you say, generate the piece of the wing that's broken and it has to figure out what that wing would normally look like. It makes so it goes certain through, decisions. decisions. Yeah, so, so, so Adobe have they, their Adobe stock um, collection where people have licensed their pictures and Adobe is using, they're not using the internet like a lot of other uh, products. They're using their own proprietary image collection where people have voluntarily provided their images uh, and they're in the public domain. So they're images that people have said, you can use this uh, without royalty or cost. Well, yeah, they so, had to, so they're yeah, using, otherwise they would have had to pay the authors, right? Authors, yeah. Well, this is a big, this is a big thing that's happening with AI is, is a lot of people are, um, are saying that, you know, when AI is generating an image, it's using thousands and thousands and thousands, millions of images that it's seen on the internet. And those are images that aren't necessarily uh, public domain. They, they, they may be images that somebody painted. They may be things that photographers uh, did and, and, and colorized and photoshopped and whatever. And so, yes, it's on the internet and it's available for anybody to view, but you're actually using it as input to your training of your, your AI engine. And so some people are saying, no, oh, wait a minute, the AI engine here is, is really, it's, it's, it's learning and using stuff that it didn't pay for, you know? So now, I mean, do we not do that as well? I mean, you know, how many times have we gone over to Flickr and looked at a really neat, you know, setup and we see the way the light is hitting a model and we're going, oh, that's really cool. I never thought of adding a red filter on her hair to, to, to give her hair a red glow in the studio, you know, and, and so the idea came to you because you saw someone light a model's hair with a, a, a red hair light and, and you go, oh, that's, that's an interesting concept. So, you know. So it's not much different. Not much different. Some people will argue it's not much different. Uh, other people will say, you know, wait a minute, you know, like the, the, the AI, you know, is, 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 is replicating or copying something that it's seen and, and you know, uh, the, the debates go back and forth and, and uh, you know I, I see both sides of the argument so I, I you know I, I just say you know kudos to Adobe that have taken the time to say we didn't train our engine based on just random stuff on the internet so that's a big discussion that's coming up with chat GBT and other things where the engines are looking what the internet has got and using that for information. So you can ask, you know, chat GBT a question like, um, you know, uh, I don't know, is, is there a, when was the last firm, firmware update for the Nikon Z7 II? <laughs> and, and it goes out and looks at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pages in real time. And, you know, instead of giving you a hit list like Google does and says, you know, here's 85 pages and you gotta go read them all. It reads them all, figures out what they're all saying and, and if they, more or less converge on some sort of solution. It says, yes, you know, uh, firmware for, you know, Nikon Z7 II was last released in, you know, October 17th, um, you know, three weeks ago, you know, and, and you go, oh, thank you very much. But it's, it's, it's doing everything in real time. So some people are saying, well, what happens if the internet, you know, I can, t I can do something with ChatGPT and say something like, Generate a web page for a fictitious newspaper called, you know, the uh, the Ottawa Liars, <laughs> with the styling of, you know, um, Financial Times, and uh, populate it with headlines uh, from, you know, a Disney movie or something like that. You know, you could do whatever you want, and now that's content on the internet. And so ChatGPT is finding that, and how does it know it's a real website or not a real website or whatever? So as more and more stuff shows up on the web, then what's truth and what isn't? And if you have a website, which is or a search engine, which is which is relying on web content, and it doesn't differentiate between a spoof website that's making you know fun of of, of a specific actor versus the real actors, you know, uh, work, uh, then you might be getting misleading information and not know about it. And, and 
So there's all kinds of, of debates and, and, and concerns over, you know, like what should be allowed as input to, to an, an engine or not. It's only the beginning, um, I guess, yeah. of... of well, yeah, we're, we're, we're at that stage where we're trying to figure out like where we're going to go with this and, and how bad it can be and, and how good it can be and so on. Uh, some people are worried about plagiarism, like, you know, you can copy things. But I find that's interesting because we are more likely to plagiarize than an AI piece of software because the AI will look at thousands and thousands of pages and create something which was not in any one of those pages. It, it, it just assimilates and, and regurgitates uh, new content based on everything it's seen. But if you were to try to compare its text or its pictures with other pictures, you would never see anything. Like you, you, you look at somebody who could, does composite and you'll find this bird came from over here and this bridge came from over there and this came from over there. And like you could find elements of everything that the person did with the composite from many other places and they, they just collected it, and put it together and they created their composite. AI, in fact, when it generates that butterfly wing that's missing, that's an absolutely original butterfly wing. It, it's, it's, it's fashioned from tens of thousands of similar butterflies but that's an absolutely unique set of pixels that it didn't co copy from anywhere. It generated it based on, you know, after seeing thousands and thousands and thousands of butterfly wings, this is what I generated. It's and an original three of them. Creation, 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 actually, by a machine, by but it's, a, it's an original. It's an original. It, it, absolutely, yeah. I mean, if you were to compare the pixels, you, you would not find a, a replica anywhere. So. Fun stuff. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. No problem. So let's uh, go back to screen share. Let's go back here. And that's not going to work. Let's do that. And thank you, Mike. Thank you. Go Mike. back here. So how many people we still got left? Oh, a few. <laughs> a few diehards. So uh, I will 